Welcome to uh, today's uh, conversation about uh, what is going on in the world of technology uh, to Beyond Conversations. My name is David Orban, and uh, today we are going to talk about uh, a, the edges of a very popular topic. Uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, has been around for several decades, but uh, it has come to the attention of a lot more people than before, not uh, for the latest Hollywood movie uh, representing the particularly gruesome uh, dystopian um, uh, adventures uh, finally resolved with probably a fist fight. That is what happens in those uh, movies. Uh, but it has come to the attention of hundreds of millions of people uh, through... Uh, AI systems that appear to do a lot of useful things in novel ways, specifically chat GPT and its uh, various uh, uh, embodiments and inclusions uh, in uh, various um, applications or uh, in Microsoft's uh, uh, search engine Bing. And the edge that I am uh, talking about here is not the current version of AI, which is a narrow AI, but AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, which we don't have yet, but we'd better think about. And uh, I have uh, as uh, our guest uh, today, Roman Yampolsky, who likes to think about what AGI can or cannot do, and what we can or cannot do about AGI. Welcome, Roman. Thanks for inviting me again. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, we did have a conversation uh, uh, two or three years ago, uh, and uh, I thought it was uh, time to uh, uh, regroup, uh, to, uh, well, uh, ask ourselves uh, what changed or what did not change uh, in the meantime. Uh, but before we go into the uh, thick of our conversation, why don't you uh, tell our audience a little bit about uh, yourself, um, uh, what you do, your field of study, your publications, your line of thought? Sure, I'm a computer scientist at the University of Louisville. I've been working on AI safety and security for well over a decade have a couple of books published on it here and there, and uh, probably over a hundred papers on that subject. Uh, that's what I do. Fantastic. So um, how do you uh, define the, the difference between uh, narrow AI and, and AGI? So it's becoming a bit fuzzy. It used to be that a narrow AI was a system which did one thing and maybe did it well, but just one. It played chess or so it did taxes or something like that. Um, general intelligence is capable of learning multiple skills, transferring skills between domains. But uh, I think there is some confusion between human level intelligence and general intelligence. Humans are general in the domain of expertise of humans. We don't know much about things outside of that domain. A truly general intelligence would be capable of learning all those skills. What we're starting to see is systems which are kind of in between. They are still not general in that they can pick up new capabilities in any domain, but they can easily have hundreds, if not thousands of skills. They play chess, they speak French, they can manipulate robot arms. So we are kind of moving from this narrow one trick pony to becoming more and more general. And that's the research progress we see. And more lately, we are starting to get surprised. They have skills and capabilities within explicitly program in. So after you train a model, you train GPT-4, then you start discovering what can it do? And the designers, developers get surprised that in fact, it has thousands of new skills we didn't anticipate. And at some point, we'll be surprised to discover it's fully general. Um, so the past 
experiences uh, with AI were narrow, as you said, or a given particular skill. And uh, even among uh, AI researchers, uh, it became almost kind of a joke as soon as uh, some particular problem was successfully solved, it stopped becoming, it, it stopped being considered an AI problem anymore, like, like chess, for example. And this interestingly reflected on our own classification, both um, uh, practical and epistemological. It uh, was a reflection also on our own uh, uh, thought processes, cognitive abilities, and how we go about attacking certain problems. It is something similar happening in the field of AGI as well? Are we uh, reflecting on whether to start humans are general intelligences? I can freely admit that if you list my skills, probably you will stop sooner than 10,000. Maybe you will sooner than 5,000. I didn't try, but uh, you will pretty rapidly be able to say, oh, David is actually not a general intelligence. Well, I think it's about capability to pick up new skills. So if you wanted to learn to play a new musical instrument, you could, whereas uh, narrow AI systems couldn't. And I think that's the fundamental difference. It has potential of learning new domains and new skills, not necessarily already has all that capability. So an average human knows very little, but if you take humanity as a set and take a union of all the capabilities, yeah, we speak thousands of languages, play hundreds of instruments, and we are quite impressive as a group. But well, uh, uh, the, 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 you made two two different remarks. So let's talk about the musical instrument. And I I play very 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 little guitar. I play practically no piano, and that's it. Uh, so yes, if I applied myself, I could improve my piano playing skills. But it is likely at this age uh, that I would never become a concert pianist, right? Let alone one of the best uh, pianists in the in the world. Sa same with chess. I I know the rules. I play, but um, my my uh, uh, LOE score is uh, probably tiny. And even if I applied myself, I would not be able to improve it to the level of, you know, any anyone worth mentioning. So uh, at every individual, the theoretical possibility of learning is there, but the practical possibility is fairly limited, uh, both by time and circumstances and, and latent talent, right? So I noticed we're doing this with AI right now. It used to be we were like, maybe it will get to level of an average human. Now we're like, it has to be like Einstein or it doesn't even count. Uh, the standards are kind of, the goalposts are moved. Uh, so I, I think if you don't expect an average human to be the best comedian, top inventor, poet, and everything else, you should not have same expectations for uh, software. Okay. And then you went and and rather than considering an individual human as as I uh, volunteered to be examined, you considered all of humanity and said, well, as as a group, all of humanity is capable of remarkable things. And I agree, for example, we have created a civilization that is itself now in the process of creating ever smarter artificial intelligences. It, so humanity uh, as, as a group is um, a general intelligence. We for sure don't have uh, more than one reference point 
uh, with respect of how general an intelligence can be. Um, so do you expect um, the blurry interval between what used to be narrow intelligence and what is becoming more and more general intelligence to uh, be fed by human exploration uh, in the sense that it is the coupling of human intelligence with ever better AI models that will endow those AI models to learn new skills rather than AI models being able to learn new skills without human involvement. Well, at least for right now, it seems that they still scale without any diminishing returns. If you put more multimodal data with more compute, they continue improving and uh, going beyond our expectations. I, I mentioned humanity as a whole because our definition of superintelligence relies on being better than all humans in all domains. So that's kind of the next uh, expectation level. Uh, Kurzweil talked about simulating one human brain by around 2023 and all human brains by around 2045. So that's the two kind of interesting points we're starting to maybe be between. Um, and uh, uh, when I refer to um, AI systems being able to learn without human involvement is uh, what uh, uh, is, is transfer learning, what uh, I, I refer to. Uh, how good are uh, systems today in abstracting their training and then applying that training to an increasingly disparate uh, uh, set of circumstances? It's changing so quickly. Like in one week, we get new papers where this capability is different. Like if we had this interview last week, I would say it would be worse. But now I see systems which can look at a video a demonstration of a skill shown once by a human and pick up that skill. So that's more impressive than a human child. Uh, definitely, they're getting much better. I don't think they're fully general. They still definitely benefit from uh, human supervision, but uh, it's improving exponentially in comparison to what we as a species are capable of. And 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 I used to say that it is improving super exponentially. I use the term of jolting technologies applied to AI, and I uh, uh, use the the data that uh, was uh, uh, collected by by me, uh, where we are not uh, only referring to uh, one uh, set of uh, uh, accelerations, but uh, the um, uh, the ability uh, of looking at different uh, data sets yeah in twenty staff the um published uh, their report uh, talking about a two eras of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, up to 2012 uh, when they said uh, AI was following uh, Moore's law, doubling in power uh, every couple of years. And then uh, they said uh, after that, um, in, this, in this report published in 2019, uh, we are actually seeing a new uh, exponential uh, with AI uh, uh, doubling in power every eight months, uh, and they are talking about two distinct eras. And in my view, this is a very, um, quotation marks, lazy approximation of the data set, because uh, since then we have further data, and uh, uh, Jensen Huang, uh, the founder of uh, NVIDIA, um uh, in their 2021 um global uh, developer conference says not eight months anymore four months and in 2022 he said not four months anymore every two months 
So the rate of acceleration is shrinking and the measure of the variable rate of acceleration is the jolt uh, or, 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 or the jerk, but uh, jerking technologies is less uh, appealing. Uh, uh, so that's why I talk about jolting technologies instead. Um, so when you say uh, things are changing rapidly from one week to the next, um, are you able to keep keep up with the with the the the, the science? Not really. I used to be able to read every paper in AI safety when I started. Then it was all the good papers. Now I can't even read the titles. It's just too much. Uh, so let's uh, talk about more uh, specialized, the more specialized field. We mentioned AI in general, then AGI, artificial general intelligence. And so let's touch upon uh, or 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 start to to go towards. AGI safety and security. But before going there or arriving there, let's talk about uh, IT safety and security, right? Um, in, you, you specifically look at uh, how to design and if it is all possible to design safe and secure AGI systems. But we have not been very good at designing safe and secure IT systems, mm -hmm. right? Uh, whether we are talking about uh, traditional viruses or the vulnerabilities of our hardware and software, or more uh, recently ransomware, uh, these are all demonstrations of the fact that that our software development practices are such that systems are working, you know, whether we are talking about uh, Google uh, or Facebook or other large scale, scale systems, it, it, is, it is rare these days that they become universally unavailable. However, they are buggy. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of little glitches that each individual user doesn't see, but those who are trying to keep up the systems are very well uh, aware of. And the same is true of our operating systems, of our smartphones, and, and, and so on. Do you see an improvement in the overall practice of uh, of software development and how software tries to be better and better engineered or systems get bigger and bigger but their their um, bugs are still as numerous as before per thousands or per million lines of code the new systems typically rely on pre-existing code through libraries they inherit. So you just have this history of undiscovered bugs, which keeps growing and you may have seven levels of dependencies. So modern developer never sees all the code the software relies on. So if anything is getting worse, but the fundamental difference between cybersecurity and AI safety is that in cybersecurity, if you are hacked, if something happens, you lose money, maybe you lose time, reputation, but you get to try again. You reset the password, you issue a new credit card, and you move on. In AI safety, you only get one chance. If it's an existential crisis, uh, you're not going to get a second opportunity. So a very different level of expectation. We're kind of used to this, like, yeah, everyone gets hacked. All software has bugs. Just click agree on a contract. But that same approach will not work with uh, AGI. Well, uh, let's uh, dig deeper in, in, in that. So uh, you rightly said that we can afford uh, to iteratively develop um, software and uh, to observe the intended outcome. And if the software deviates from the intended outcome, its output is different from what we expected. We go back, we look at the code, and we try to correct uh, uh, where the, the deviation happened. 
Um, so is it and 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 you said that that the same approach will not work with with AGI. Uh, you actually published a series of uh, papers uh, that are mapping kind of a boundary conditions of all the things that we are not going to be able to do with, with AGI. We are not going to be able to explain it. We are not going to be able to keep it in check uh, and so on and so forth. Would you like to, to, to list uh, some of these things that we are not going to be able to to do with AGI and and without you know getting into excessive uh, scientific detail, but uh, why do you come to the, those conclusions? Sure. So the big ones are explainability. We do not understand how large neural networks come to their decisions. A full explanation is the model itself. That's not something comprehensible to a human. So you have to simplify it. You have to provide a simplified explanation, which necessarily emits some of the factors in the decision. There is billions of weights, connections. You'll get something like a top 10 reasons why you got denied credit. So either you are getting this lossy compression explanation, which is just not true, or you're getting something you cannot comprehend. Similar problem with predictability. We can predict overall direction in which the system is going, final state, but we cannot predict how it's going to get there, intermediate steps in that process. And that's easy to see. If you could predict those steps, you would be super intelligent. You would exactly know what the system is going to do next. So the assumption that it is smarter than you would not be correct. There is dozens of other less obvious results, but all of them combined to our inability to control more intelligent systems indefinitely. So as long as there is a significant intellectual differential between us and superintelligent system, long term, it's definitely not going to be obedient to whatever instructions we provide short term. Um, now, we, we, we will go back to the issue of uh, um, information flow pattern recognition uh, and and recognition of uh, reality um, and um, what uh, necessarily binds us to compress reality in chunks that we can interpret with uh, the tools we have available but uh, before we do that uh, Let's see and let's go through a little bit um, what happens if we accept the fact that uh, uh, AGI cannot be understood uh, deeply or fully by us and that uh, AGI cannot be fully controlled uh, by us. So... Let's assume that a AGI uh, happens in, and it will do its thing in a manner that we cannot fully comprehend and its thing is going to be not completely what we expect. Is this going to lead to a progressive deviation that is bound to increase or could it uh, oscillate between various states that do not necessarily um, go far from what we expect or farther than a given deviation that we don't want to um exceed so first I, I just said it's impossible to predict what it's going to actually do so i can't possibly claim uh, i can but uh, i would note that the difference between heaven and hell is one bit right so a small deviation can get you quite far from your desired state okay um now let's um go back uh, to um, 
the epist epistemological foundation. Uh, let's discuss your own work as a scientist uh, and uh, ask ourselves uh, the methods and the, and the claims uh, that you arrived to uh, whether you are likely to be missing something that could lead someone else to a different conclusion from, from yours. Um, how do you evaluate the validity and the comprehensiveness of your own conclusions? So that's a great question. I actually have a paper on verification, verification of software, mathematical proofs, and the conclusion there is that they are not verifiable to a degree of 100% certainty. You can invest more time, more resources, more reviewers, and get more and more confidence that the software has no bugs. Nine, 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 and as many as you want nines, but it's more expensive to get there. But you never get to 100%. What you get is verified with respect to a certain verifier. These two peer reviewers said publish it. There is 100,000 scientists, but those two you randomly got approved publication of this paper. It doesn't mean it's not containing a bug. It's quite possible I'm wrong and nothing would make me happier than to be wrong about this. But uh, so far, there are pretty simple proofs of things where it's self-contradictory and uh, no one has uh, at least so far pointed out those uh, proofs contain an error of some kind. So that's encouraging. Also in practice, none of the impossibility results I have talked about have been violated. No one has said, oh, we can explain large neural networks, here's code. Or definitely I can predict more capable systems, here's how I'm gonna do it. Today, what is the date? March 8th, happy International Women's Day. Uh, no one has a working system or even a prototype which they would claim would scale to control systems of any intelligence. The state of the art is we know what the problems are, but we have no solutions. Uh, you, you just spared the, the European Union a billion euro, uh, which they allocated to explainable AI research. So we should call them up and say, you know, donate it to, uh, you know, whatever other uh, worthy cause. Um, so what are you working on given the generality of these uh, conclusions? What are you working on today? So clearly not everyone agrees with me. So the development community has no fear and just tries to develop AI as quickly as possible. Safety community thinks that if only they were given that billion dollars and a little more time, everything is solvable. They have no doubt, they have intuition that they can control super intelligent systems. I'm saying that, uh, no, actually, it's not a question of more money or more time. Those are unsolvable problems, and we need to find alternative ways to benefit from this very beneficial technology, but creating a fully capable AGI super intelligence without control is not a good outcome for us long term. Whatever you first want to get there last, no one's going to win anything. So what I've been working on is being more convincing, publishing more journal conference papers, showing different limitations and trying to get people to read them, which is difficult. I have an 80 page paper showing this is why control is unlikely to be happening anytime soon. And I don't think it's going viral yet. Last time I checked, it hasn't, yes, uh, or it hadn't. Now, uh the ability to develop uh, a full-blown AGI is in the eyes of, a, of the beholder, right? Uh, uh, you mentioned at the beginning that the distinction between narrow and general AI is becoming fuzzy. So if there were um, a universal consensus and the United Nations uh, treaty on uh, the limitation of AI capabilities in order to prevent an AGI to be accidentally or purposefully released, um, do you have an idea of how uh, the researchers could 
refrain themselves from breaching those uh, treaties and what would the enforcement mechanisms be? I'm not arguing for government regulation. I don't think it would work, uh, mostly because the cost of scaling AI keeps coming down. It is still a large, expensive project today. We can monitor compute use, but in a few years, you could do it in a laptop. We already see experiments where a single powerful laptop can run some of those models at home. So I don't think simply making it illegal will work. Uh, government regulation in the past uh, for spam, for computer viruses, has not uh, reduced this level of malevolent uh, software to zero. And as I said, we need zero. We cannot accept some failure. We need it to be uh, 100%. So I haven't found anything more convincing than personal self-interest. If I get this uh, usually young, healthy, rich CEO of a startup, uh, to go, this will get me killed, I will not be famous, and uh, there is no glory in it. To stop doing it, that uh, that is more convincing than passing some sort of law where they just move to another country or find another way to bypass the law. Um, I don't know uh, what is the, the, the correlation or lack of correlation between being young, uh, successful, rich, and... Uh, smart enough to realize that AGI should not be pursued, uh, including the fact that, uh, according to what you are describing, there has to be a 100% success rate in convincing all of those. Um, uh, so let's go back uh, to, to two questions at the, at the beginning. Um, there are... Uh, if you ask 100 AI researchers, some who are still convinced that AGI is either not possible or uh, that uh, the approach uh, that uh, is being pursued today is uh, basically a dead end and that novel discoveries about how um, our brain and mind uh, uh, work uh, are needed. Um, an example of uh, this is uh, specifically in uh, uh, in the in the field of AI research is uh, is Jan Lecun, uh, who says uh, large uh, language models are are not enough, are a dead end. Uh, and uh, an example uh, uh, of uh, a scientist who believes that we we don't understand how the mind works is uh, Roger Penrose. Uh, who uh, is convinced that uh, uh, quantum phenomena uh, are playing a, a major role. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, uh, if we don't uh, implement analogs of human minds uh, using uh, quantum technologies, we are not going to go uh, anywhere. Um, Is it correct that that uh, you don't believe these uh, are sufficient in the sense that we cannot afford for them to be wrong? Uh, that that we need to be putting in place whatever safeguards uh, we we can, because if uh, Mian Lacun or Roger Penrose or any of the other skeptics are wrong and we accidentally uh, stumble upon AGI, well, we, we have to be have to be ready. I think even if they're right, it doesn't change anything. Instead of five-year timeline, we get 25-year timeline, but it's the same problem, same unsolvability issues. So I'm not sure it makes a fundamental difference. People who say we will never succeed, uh, that one I cannot understand. I'm not following the logic. But anyone who says, no, no, five years is crazy. It's definitely 20 years. That's fine. I, I can accept that. We have. Yeah. Well, uh, we, uh, have we, 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 we are able to falsify the claim that it is never going to be possible because we know that a bunch of hydrogen atoms in 13 billion years created general intelligence. Well, unless you believe in some magical properties of humans, souls, religion, uh, that's the only argument I found which may get you out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so, 
between those uh, intervals of uh, let's say five and 25 years, over the course of the past couple of years, your own expectation has moved and, and in which direction? Oh, I definitely see more capable systems, more general systems and resources, funding, compute, human resources, all growing exponentially around it. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder to find something only a human can do. It is surprising that things we as assumed will be the most difficult uh, turned out to be the easiest. Art, for example, is apparently trivial to make. Uh, so uh, it may continue on this path. We are not seeing any stagnation in terms of progress. And as I said, the most amazing thing is we are deploying systems with capabilities engineers of those systems are not aware of. That never happened before. And these are, of course, uh, uh, my uh, my own playing with fire, right? Uh, I am uh, entertaining myself uh, with uh, advents uh, while uh, they are laughing uh, at me uh, behind uh, behind the screens. Uh, uh, apparently, um, these these are images that I I generated for a presentation that I'm making uh, next week in uh, in uh, Dubai. Because yeah, uh, I am for the past uh, year I have been uh, doing all my presentations illustrations with uh, with Mid Journey, and and it has been uh, a big surprise for many that the automation of creative uh, work. Uh, is now possible, uh, not only in images, but also in text uh, uh, to an increasingly uh, unapproachable degree by non-specialists. I am not a and specialist in creating. How, how new this is. This is a couple of months old, really, a year old. Uh, imagine how good it's going to be in a year or so, two years, five years. This uh, full-blown movies, virtual environments, yes, super stimuli. Okay, so let's talk about uh, super stimuli. Uh, whether attractive women or um, uh, the ability of uh, AI systems to do uh, about their own behaviors and their own capabilities. Uh, about uh, their 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 very nature, under your own prodding, and under this uh, reverberation of communication that um, exploits uh, our mirror neurons and exploits our natural tendency to empathize and to and to put ourselves in the shoes of 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 others. Um, can we and should we build uh, our uh, defenses individually by steeling ourselves against uh, these uh, super stimuli? And 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 at least uh, in my case, I feel I am able to do so. Right? I I have not uh, been uh, convinced that current AI systems are self-conscious for example that they want uh, uh, things whether to be free or to be uh, uh, doing um, different things that than what they have been programmed um, is this something that everyone should um, train themselves to to maintain I, I don't know if an average person can train themselves to that level. We have uh, Nigerian scams, right? Like nothing is more pathetic than that, and people fall for it all the time. I can certainly see my parents who have hard time figuring out how to click buttons and change settings, uh, fall for deep fakes, and uh, not have very good defenses against uh, emails targeted at them and so on. So maybe top experts can do something, but I think for most people it will be nearly impossible. And and uh, it is fascinating that uh, uh, the presence of grammar and spelling mistakes in Nigerian scams is actually 
a desirable feature on their side because they already know that there has been a filter of gullibility because there are people who look at the uh, pathetic email and they will say, oh, this is evidently a scam. But people who respond to receive part of the $20 million by the princess uh, that inherited it uh, are predisposed to go through and and uh, so the scammers receive uh, a given number of responders that have been pre-selected. Even more so, the fact that they haven't changed the story. It only targets those who have never heard about the scam. And that that is a very narrow group of people. You have to live under a rock with no internet access. Or having... Or having acquired the internet to, uh, you know, a given level of uh, uh, ability uh, recently enough. Right. Uh, so, uh, let's let's go back to our need to um, not stumble upon AGI. Um, what would you tell uh, the founder of uh, Stability AI who believes that uh, uh, open source is the best way to go about it, to put ever more advanced models in the hands of as many people as possible is what will bring about um, human flourishing. If we accept that those could be dangerous. It's like arguing that if everyone had a nuclear weapon, then the world would be safer. Either you think they are safe, and we haven't seen evidence for that, not even from developers, or they are dangerous, and then you want to not make them open access as much as possible. Um, however, with nuclear we weapons, we had... Uh... Uh, two things that I, I believe is, is different than, than uh, with advanced AI and AGI. On, on one hand, uh, the engineering were uh, on a relatively so more solid ground. There was uh, a wider consensus around uh, uh, what were the experiments that uh, we could do, uh, what were the boundary conditions uh, of those experiments. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, there is this uh, anecdote uh, of uh, the scientists asking themselves, is the nuclear explosion that we are planning to carry out as a test going to ignite the free oxygen in the atmosphere, killing everyone? Uh, uh, and uh, that is a proper existential risk, and then calculating whether that would be the case and concluding that it would not, going ahead with the experiment and being right. Um, that's, that's one. The other is that even though um, the uh, knowledge of nuclear weapons has been around for now almost 100 years, the ability to develop uh, and uh, deploy in a desiredly destructive way nuclear weapons has not become available to a very, very large number of people. It has become easier uh, and nuclear non-proliferation failed. Uh, there are more and more nuclear um, capabilities available around the world and uh, the comprehensive ban of nuclear weapons has not been achieved um, but the you know irresponsible uh, college student today cannot assemble a nuclear weapon uh, on in his dorm, and 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 both of those uh, are 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 not true in 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 advanced AI. 
uh, our ability to predict how they will work is uh, um, is uh, is um, impossible. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, and uh, and uh, the uh, availability of tools that can uh, uh, run ever more dangerous experiments uh, is going to be in the hands of everyone soon. So. So, um, your being here is part of talking about this, right? It's part of what needs to be done, part of talking about it, part of raising the uh, understanding of, uh, of, of the danger. Um, if we recognize that... Uh, AGI minus X is useful. Is there anything that we can do in order to keep the capabilities of, of our systems within uh, or below that threshold? Other than deciding to do so individually, I haven't found a solution. It, it seems that the technology we have is already very capable uh, for example, protein folding problem was solved without AGI, but uh, we need time to study existing systems. So if we had a few years at the current level, we would better understand what they can give us, what they are capable of, and maybe the need for more capable systems can be reduced. Uh, for example, life extension is something I assumed we needed help with, but maybe it's enough to just have current systems similar to the one uh, which solved the protein folding problem. But again, I, I don't think external pressure can be applied in a meaningful way. Uh, with uh, respect to nuclear weapons, uh, it's not a perfect analogy, obviously. There are some lessons we can learn from that field, which I think are useful. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, both American and Soviet creators of nuclear weapons regretted their invention and spend the rest of our lives trying to undo that damage. We actually use nuclear weapons. It would not be the same with AGI. One mistake could be more than enough, and you won't have time to kind of go back and undo it. And once it's unrolled and available to individuals, you cannot put it back in a box. So uh, we can learn still, even though we survived uh, nuclear experiments, we can learn from those mistakes. We might have uh, survival bias, survivorship bias. We had so many close calls, accidents where it, it was possible that the world would be destroyed and many, somewhere in a multiverse, some branches no longer exist because of it. So uh, I don't think we can put too much uh, into the fact that we're still here. In the... Uh, during our conversation today, you mentioned uh, um, if we had more time. Uh, so there is this uh, uh, current race that is shortening the time available, and uh, and you would like uh, much more time to be available to find a fault in your own reasoning maybe or to find some new approach or to find um, uh, something that that could uh, not diminish but eliminate the existential risk represented by by AGI um, and then and then of course you mentioned also resources um, so if a billion dollars were that round number, what is the uh, corresponding round number uh, that you would need uh, uh, or the AGI safety and security community would need uh, in time? Is it 10 years or 100 years or an unknowable amount of time? Well, I obviously don't know exact number, but I can tell you that safety work takes more time than development work. I can write a uh, function very quickly, but then to properly test it, I would need 10x time, 100x time. Even if it was deterministic, I could uh, use all the pre-existing edge cases. If it's not deterministic, if it's self-improving, self-modifying, learning a new data, 
I can exploit it in new domains. Maybe I need a million times more time to properly understand how it functions. So right now we have this exponential, as you said, super exponential growth and capability, but uh, progress and safety is not even linear. I think it's constant. Um, uh, we were uh, at the um, uh, conference uh, in Puerto Rico organized uh, by uh, the uh, Life uh, Institute uh, that um, in uh, analogy with um, the Asilmar conferences um, aims to uh, increase uh, knowledge, collaboration, understanding of this uh, problem set that was before the pandemic. And uh, I don't know if a new conference is, is being organized uh, when, uh, but that was a pretty small group. I think it was like 100 people. And at the time, we still had Russians and Chinese uh, in, in Puerto Rico, even though not many, but uh, at least a few. Uh, and uh, if a new conference were uh, to be organized uh, by uh, an institute of the MIT, I doubt uh, Russians would uh, participate, and, and I don't know about the Chinese. Um, which brings me to the point that uh, we cannot afford political uh, or even military um, contrasts or conflicts or war uh, to interfere with the need of the broadest possible potentially universal understanding of of the challenge right um, we uh, we 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 know uh, what is going on in terms of scientific publications and uh, the field is so dependent on on the talent and skills uh, and and the available hardware of uh, uh, of everyone that uh, it is highly unlikely that some um, hidden research would be further advanced. But still, uh, breaking down channels of communication can only be a hindrance uh, to to this broader understanding of of the issues. Is that correct? In general, yes, we want scientific community to be united, to communicate. In a way, the war in Russia is kind of good because it siphons resources and access to compute. So uh, I'm not aware of any large successful projects in Russia which would overtake American efforts. Uh, China may be a completely different story, but uh, at least uh, in that regard, big uh, expensive uh, conflicts kind of prevent development of scientific uh, discovery, delay it a little bit. So that's uh, a well, uh, I, I, I would have a hard time agreeing with you that uh, World War III would be desirable in this context uh, for the survivors. Uh, and uh, and I hope that is not the solution that we will adopt uh, to, to not a solution I'm AGI. Proposing. Please, uh, <laughs> definitely not what I'm hoping for. I'm just pointing out that anytime there is uh, a distraction from something like a large scientific effort, it does impact scientific uh, capabilities. Hmm. Um, so, uh, forgive me, you, you did say that you don't know, uh, you, you cannot give a precise answer, uh, but uh, did you say, oh, yeah, you, you, you gave a proportion. So you said, uh, if we needed uh, a given amount of years uh, to develop AGI, we would need 10 times or 100 times that long to be able to analyze it. I, I think so. So if we release GPT-3, GPT-4, GPT-5 every two years, I, I need 20 years in between to figure out uh, what we're dealing with. A and um, there are 100 naive uh, solutions that I'm not going to bore you with, uh, uh, such as, for example, uh, run them slower so that uh, our clock speed is faster than theirs and then be able to, to study them better. Uh, how can uh, we 
uh, rank solutions so that we concentrate on some that have a higher probability of succeeding rather than rehash uh, naive uh, ones that uh, everyone in the field uh, re realizes uh, won't work. So we just published another paper on AI risk skepticism where we have about 60 pages of uh, people's ideas about why it's not a problem, why it's going to be resolved, and we try to address uh, why they may not be right about it. Uh, there are papers surveying ideas in the AI safety field, but uh, I, I don't think there are any which have not been immediately shut down, pointed out that they have a major flaw in them. Um, I'm not uh, sure we'll ever stop getting new proposals from people who just heard about the problem and so unplug it, pour water on it. Uh, I mean, people read a lot of good science fiction. So um, yeah, again, my goal was to kind of cancel all those future attempts with a single impossibility proof and then if you can show the mistake in impossibility proof, that would be helpful. Yeah, 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 so, sure. And so we, we mentioned uh, at the beginning, and I said we would go back to it, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, in order to um, interpret the world, we compress it. And there was an article, I think, in New Yorker uh, recently that uh, was blaming, at least in the title, that uh, chat gpt is a blurry uh jpeg uh, on on the world or or transforms the web in a blurry jpeg and rather than interpret it <coughs> negatively in reading the article i found myself agreeing yes that is what we do we approximate we are lossy compressors our ability to forget is a necessary survival skill that being down in Perfect uh, remembrance of uh, everything from the past, and uh, you mentioned um, uh, one of your scientific publications of eighty pages, and just now another of sixty pages, and two books uh, that are probably uh, of hundreds of pages. Uh, they are back there somewhere, by the way, um, and and they are not blurry enough. In order to go viral, have you tried the memetic? engineer to uh, a, a, a more aggressive uh, and I am not joking where you are uh, compressing what you do to literally a meme uh, an image that is punchy enough to reach millions or tens or if Elon Musk retweets you a hundred million people so uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you know I'm a prolific shit poster. I have lots of those. Uh, sometimes Elon Musk does uh, react to them, but uh, after a million uh, views, I get one new follower. I don't think it makes a difference. This week we had an article in Time magazine, a short piece, one page, saying AI will likely be uncontrollable. What did I get out of it? Uh, maybe two emails from crazy people asking me for God knows what. So I don't think that's uh, working. I definitely try. I go on a lot of podcasts. I do interviews. We write for popular media. But uh, the very narrow segment of society who finds this topic interesting, uh, it, it doesn't scale. It's not like uh, you know popular media, Kim Kardashian, whatever, 100 million followers. It's not the same topic. Definitely. Um, so, before starting the the uh, the live stream, uh, I told you I have three children, and and uh, you told me you are aware of the same number on your side, uh, and uh, you uh, confirmed that uh, you have a somewhat unreasonable hope and faith uh, in them, uh, uh, which I think is biologically grounded. Uh, I don't know how rational, but still uh, is something we hold uh, dear. Um, because uh, we are human and want humanity to flourish. 
as well as uh, we we pass uh, the baton, we we um, have this uh, uh, ability to to sit back and then see uh, what what comes after us. Um, how do you uh, how do you uh, prepare them? Uh, I don't know the ages. Mine are grown up, um, so I don't necessarily need to to uh, dress in metaphors and fairy tales. Uh, whatever I feel about the future of the world, uh, if people listen to us and they have uh, youngsters uh, and and they want them to understand what we talk about, how would you recommend they do it? So it depends, of course, on the timelines, what you think is realistic. If you think we have enough time for your kids to grow up, you can talk about career choices. A lot of the jobs they might consider will not exist. A lot of jobs uh, only started showing up this year, prompt engineer or something like that. So you definitely have to plan for the future, decide if college is even makes sense, things of that nature. If you have shorter timelines and your children are young, it's... That's a tough one. I don't have any very good answers. My daughter, she's nine. She's helping me with cover design for my books. So that's something. She's envisioning control problem being solved. Um, well, um, what is amazing is that uh, one way or another, we will find out, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure we will be happy of the outcome or we will be delighted to be wrong. Uh, I will be will say, oh, I'm happy. All my life's work is now in 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 ruins because I was wrong uh, about all my various publications. Uh, but um, it is kind of um, intriguing that uh, the uh, Keplerian relativism doesn't apply to our generation, apparently. Uh, sometimes uh, something that is radically new comes about and and uh, uh, with the eyes of past or uh, potentially, hopefully, future generations, you can actually say that was a special time and, and it feels like we, we are living it. It's definitely very unlikely that you would live at a time where you get to decide the future of the universe forever. So that kind of gives more more credence to simulation hypothesis and other interpretations of what's going on. Maybe it's a test to see the crazy people who will actually run AGI and make sure they are taken care of. Okay. Well, um... Uh, we spoke uh, three years ago, uh, so I hope to be able to call you for a new uh, uh, live in three years and uh, see what happened in the meantime. And uh, Roman, thank you very much uh, for the work you do and uh, the energy that you invest uh, in uh, alerting uh, as many people as you can uh, about uh, the work that needs to be done and uh, the risks uh, that uh, we need to minimize and hopefully eliminate. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'll put it on my calendar, three years. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's have a reminder. Bye-bye <laughs> and talk to you next time.